uh, okay, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, so this is uh, uh, this tutorial is a uh, uh, the first part of two a uh, two part uh, two part series, the two tutorials on Kafka. So we'll have one today and one tomorrow. So today is an, an introduction to Kafka, and tomorrow we'll be con basically continuing a little bit more into some uh, slightly advanced uh, topics uh, regarding Kafka. Okay, so let me start right uh, away. So, um, so before we start, so since we like uh, there was like maybe in week uh, four or uh, week five, I think there were like um, a mention of um, stream processing and like maybe a suggestion to use uh, Kafka or Faust, actually something similar to Kafka. Um, so. Can uh, uh, any one of you tell me, like, what do you know about Kafka and what it is used for? Like, it is basic uh, or like its use cases. Um, anyone? Anyone who want to volunteer anything? Do you have anything in mind about like maybe when you read the current document, what what did you come up with? Like what is your understanding so far of how you are going to be using Kafka for this in this challenge? Okay, so let me uh, share my screen. Dad was sleeping today. Um, all right, let's see if this is going to be like uh, productive in, in some way. Anyway. Okay, uh, so there are like an answer from Abu Bakr in, in the chat. Um, uh, in that, that box, uh, he says, like, it's a data storage tool that can be used for data fetching. Well, it's not quite, yeah, there are data fetching or something like that related, but it is, it is, um, like the use case or what it is exactly is a, a bit different. So let's just jump in. Um, maybe I will assume that maybe this is just because you are really new to this and you didn't have a chance to, to look at this. Um, okay. Uh, Hillary, go ahead. Hillary, do you? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um, so from my understanding, okay, from first experience, first uh, Kafka normally is used for for like uh, temporary storage and uh, enabling real-time processing, and uh, in this case, uh, in this case, uh, I don't remember uh, when, uh, like when the when we receive uh, from the document that I read, I didn't understand well. But when we push, when you publish the back test we we take the back test results to kafka and then kafka will will kind of uh i don't know uh analyze the or bring the is bring display the results something like that so it's like when you when you do the 
results. Okay, when the user puts in the hyperparameters and then gets the results, the results are pushed to Kafka and then Kafka will automatically kind of display them. That's what I understood so far. Okay. Um, okay, so this is actually what you're saying is not um, everything about Kafka or it's not exactly precise, but you are getting part of it. Abu Bakr's answers, Abu Bakr's answer is also like getting part of it. But um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you both for your answers. Like, um, yeah, it's just to getting, um, so let's get, jump right in and then we can like any questions or discussions we can have later. So, uh, okay. So this is uh, like what is like the definition of Kafka. Kafka is an open source distributed event streaming platform. So like this is um, the important thing here is that it's event streaming and we're going to define this in a bit. So the whole thing is that it is for uh, data streaming basically. Event here just means uh, like sending for data uh and it's uh we use it for like high performance data pipelines in like uh streaming analytics and like uh, uh data integrations so you know what streaming means uh streaming is this continuous uh real-time data flow so it's not something you store and you get uh just like uh, at the specific times or in batches this is real time and Kafka basically can, it will store data as events in what is called topics. So like there are a lot of terminology here. If you are new to this, you're going to meet a lot of like new terms, but like once you learn what they are, like it's like the thing is not complicated. So um, let's just uh, to say what is an event. An event is a record or a message sometimes called, um, it's basically, um, data basically just means some a piece of our information basically or it can be like um so it's an event something happened like it's a message that has some like a key and value and some metadata uh, added to it uh yeah is there a question or is it some comment Okay, so the emphasis on distributed is going to come in. It's uh, really that uh, like some useful part of, of Kafka that is distributed and which makes it scalable uh, in the use of it. Um, okay, so just I'm just explaining what an event here. It's just basically a piece of inf a piece of the of a piece of data, and it's like a, it's a have a key and value. It comes in a key and value form. Uh, and this is what we're talking about, event streaming. So it's data streaming, and event is just like uh, this um, uh, but a specific format of, of data. So it can be anything, basically, but like it just has this key value format. Um, okay, so um, this is the definition of it, basically. So this is again, so again, explaining like um, after explaining what an event is, explaining what is event streaming. So event streaming is uh, um, the practice of that involves like capturing the data in real time from like it's uh, like uh, any from data sources and uh, then processing it or manipulating it, transforming it in a particular way and uh, or like um, storing it for later for storing it for later can be for like a, you can specify a time it can be for like a, a long a like short or long time it's up to you basically how long you, you want to store the data in in Kafka and uh, basically you can also be, uh, that is data streaming can also include interacting or reacting to the data basically in real time or interactively and routing like the data into like data streams in different destinations so there are like uh, many things that are involved here basically you can write the data in get the data out and like also uh, process it transform it or react to it in particular ways so in a setup and let me maybe i don't have here a good diagram so 
let me get a good diagram from here maybe just to explain um the thing is that about this so just to like i don't know to explain the distribution why why is it useful um uh okay so just like uh let me just see Uh, maybe in, a little bit later because there are um, more terminologies involved um, and we need to explain all of those. Just like, uh, so, there are like, um, you can like think about like what I talked about in event the same, like there are three kind of uh, um, capabilities. There are, you have like uh, the publishing, what is writing data to, to Kafka is called publishing reading data from from kafka is called subscribing so um you store the streams into topics or like it's, it's stored durably we'll, we, we explain topics in a bit and then process streams of events as they occur or retroactively um so and all again all of these these three uh, key uh, capabilities are distributed is which makes them scalable they're elastic and fault tol tolerant that's be because like uh, there are like um uh, safeguards in place basically with kafka you can choose to copy have multiple copies of your data so that and you can distribute them across clusters so that um the data, the data is stored in clusters servers and clusters basically and you can choose to like um copy have multiple copies from your, of your data that means that like you will have it uh false tolerant and if something happened to one of your like some of your servers the others will be fine um and there are like security and safety implementations as well um within kafka so this is like what makes it very is very popular in use uh, okay so this is the architecture of of uh, of like of Kafka how it works, and you can see so there are like um um so this is a Kafka cluster, and in Kafka clusters you have brokers. Brokers are the servers that actually store the the data inside, and then you have a producer and consumer. So producer is the one that is a piece of code. Or an application client application that writes the data into uh, into Kafka, and consumers are the client applications that read the data from from Kafka basically. So uh, this is the architecture. Zookeeper is like a manager. Um, it's something extra, so it's like it's it is separated from Kafka. So it's something um, additional. It's also a batch Zookeeper. Uh, and it's like it's just for managing the conf uh, configurations and metadata for 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 Kafka classes. And uh, so basically, when you use Kafka, you usually install Zookeeper with it. And um, there is like a other like another option to use it without Zookeeper. This is was introduced later, but like um, yeah. So this is basically how how it works. Um. So again. This is will be in details, but this is like the, gen, the general structure. Any questions so far? Like, does this like, am I going too slow or too quick? Does this sound? Are you? It's fine. Okay. Um, let's continue. So just talking about this, I already mentioned this. So producers and consumers, producers are like, client applications or piece of code or a process that publishes or writes. So um, it's not, it, uh, let's say, the producer is the one that produces the data, basically. You can understand it like that. It's just like, um, um, let me just stop here. Let's like a uh, uh, time out here. As for me, this, uh, these terminologies are uh, like um, new, kind of like I just learned them with Kafka. I'm not sure if like they come up in other, um, Probably they are shared with other like uh, kind of like um, 
uh, corners of like software software like uh, uh, engineering and stuff probably so uh, for me it's just like uh, it's new so that's why I'm maybe emphasizing that you have to understand all of this technology okay just to continue so a producer is the one that generates the data or like writes the data basically into Kafka again writing is called publishing consumers are the one that like consume uh the data basically reading them re read reading the data sorry and it's called like subscribe subscribe to kafka read read from kafka and so this uh, the thing here is that producers and consumers are completely decoupled of each other they don't need to know about each other they don't need to like uh, like have like some kind of uh uh, a plugin or like some kind of an adapter to like uh, basically interact with each other they don't have to they don't even need to know about each other at all one of them writes to kafka completely independently another one reads from kafka so kafka here works as like a very good like um, you can think about this like if you have uh, a big application and you divided it into a small pieces so Think about it, any application that you have, like uh, a front end, a back end, and like uh, maybe like multiple um, operations that like you need to like create data from one one source. Okay, let me just look at maybe this graph. You had it open somewhere. Like um, it's not that great, but anyway. Um, So this like this is an actually um all right so just think about like if you have I'm just wanna see, see this that because like if you have an application that uses data from multiple sources or you have multiple microservices as they called that do different things with the with data. And of course, like in the usual setup, the one that we usually create here, like in, in the past few weeks, we use we usually have a database, um, like Postgres or something, and then our different parts of our application will be interacting with this database. Okay. But in each part, in each script, you have to have like this communicating with Postgres, uh, or like maybe communicating with each other in some way. What Kafka does here is that it replaces this basically like every like any piece like a microservice or like a source of data just input its uh, stream of data into into Kafka and the other parts will just read from Kafka and you don't need any kind of like a, a direct uh, communication between these two between uh, like two because like I know because Kafka is distributed uh, and basically that means that you can have um, as many, uh, it's like um, horizontally distributed, so basically you can scale it easily. So and if you have these microservices, that's where you can like have like um, multiple copies of, of one, if you if like one microservice, you want like more functionality or more power, computing power or whatever, like um, then basically you are scaling all of our application together, Kafka makes it like easier for you to do that. Um, I don't know, so maybe I'm seeing same things that are not completely precise, but like um, this is the basic idea. So is that like uh, clear? Okay, Abu Bakr. Microservices are not in Kafka, Abu Bakr. Microservices is like when uh, in an application, um and uh you can have like uh instead of like having a big complicated application you can you can divide your application into smaller pieces that each one of the each piece independently does some 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 task okay and then basically you instead of having this one big complicated application you will have multiple microservices that are what they are called uh, each one of them does some kind of process or some kind of task uh, separately. And this is exactly this tendency to do, to divide your work, like your applications in this way, is to make it scalable. Um, and it's also, of course, like uh, easier to maintain and easier to, yeah. 
Abu Bakr. Okay, sorry to interrupt, but yes. uh, like I'm thinking of it as uh, like uh, Docker. So Docker compose files so that each ha each services have uh, like different things, like uh, as Hillary mentioned. So is it like that? So exactly what you are talking about in Docker is also exactly my, what microservices are. Yes. So in uh, when you are thinking about Docker compose. Uh, you have different services in your compose file, right? Each service is a, is basically a microservice. It's uh, like a um, um, a piece of like it's part of your application. It does a particular task, and you write it separately. So basically, like maybe you will have um, in your code, you will have like a, a part for I don't know. Give you some comments, some kind of example, and basically for each. Uh, service for each microservice will have its separate code you will create a docker image for it or you can have a, like a docker file for it or like it's a decor image and like defined in the in the docker compose basically and these uh, separately these services are separate ser services are like are microservices and um yeah this is exactly the same the same thing i'm talking about so this when you are using it with Docker, uh, you're content containerizing your microservices and basically uh, like making it easier to deploy uh, again um, uh, because like each one of them is has its own like is, is oh, it will be running in its own container right and um, because like you can run as many containers of the same service as you want separately from others. So it makes it easier and like more flexible to scale. Um, so yeah, exactly. So we're uh, using Docker Compose in your containerization is uh, yeah, it's like so one like one part like when how handling microservices work. Okay, so does that make sense? I think I saw a worker. Um, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right. Um, other questions? Should we? Okay. Thomas again? Yeah, uh, I think you answered most of it with the uh, Docker explanation, but you, you said there, there, there is no need to uh, the connection with, between the producers and the client side. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you said uh, there is no connection between the producers, the uh, ones uh, and the client side, or the, the microservices, or the, the ones who create the data, I think. Yeah. How, 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 do, how do they get the specific uh, thing they, they want? Uh, from the client side, like fetching the data, or uh, yeah, are you talking about what like what I was talking here? Well, let me just share my screen. This this diagram I was showing a little bit. This one, yeah, is this what you're? Yes. Can you see my screen? So like, yeah, this is what I'm saying. What I'm talking about, like maybe you will have like a web service a microservice, some kind of uh, source, like an IoT, Internet of Things, sensors, data, a database you already have. All of these, like, can, like, the sources of data can, they will write or produce to, into Kafka, and others will consume from Kafka. So you don't have a direct, you don't need a direct connection. You just, all of them are connected to Kafka. Um, and basically, Kafka makes it very simple to do, to do this. Uh, what is not clear? I don't get. I didn't get your question. Uh, I think you answered with the Docker file, like uh, accessing the specific uh, application source data. Uh, I think. Yeah. So Docker maybe did you like uh, confusing it with Docker? Like okay. So when we talked about Docker, we were talking. Sorry. So I don't hear you very well, Tamaskin. Can you maybe write your question? Is this different from Docker or is it the same process? 
So Docker doesn't really does doesn't deal with the data handling the data in a streaming way, right? But the thing we were talking about about in in Docker, in spe specifically in Docker Compose, when you write like, okay. so suppose I have I can write um, these pieces. I want to containerize my whole application using Docker. And what we do, what you have been doing actually before, is that uh, maybe you'll have a service. It's called a service in the Docker Compose file. As far as that is Postgres, which is this database, and then you will have a service that is maybe the backend, and a serve another service that is like maybe another piece of code for I don't know sensor or something, and um, any like uh, just imagine I don't know like uh, not this specifically but like this uh, imagine that this uh, like you have in a, a big app and you have these pieces. And you, each one of them, you have a different service in Docker Compose. So when you write a different service for each, that means like uh, it has its own container. When it runs, you run every service runs its own, in its own container. And what I was, I was explaining there is that these services are what, yeah, like usually called microservice. So because like there are pieces of code or pieces of there are like a part of the application that does a particular task. It's not the full thing, it's just a part. And when you write it independently like this, when you write it like even in Docker Compose, forget about Kafka for a bit. When you write in the Docker Compose as a separate service, that means it runs in its own container. You can scale it separately, meaning you can run multiple containers of the same service if you want, separately from the others. And um, and basically, you can ship it separately uh, from the others. You can write its own Docker image and ship it separate from the other parts of your app. And basically, what we were saying because before is that this is the same like microservice, like using microservices is uh, there in Docker Compose is uh, like the same concept like what we're talking about here with Kafka is that you have these multiple microservices. We're not talking about containerization here, but about the data streaming and the con basically the communication between different parts, different microservices will be through Kafka, which makes it like um, these different parts don't need to know about each other. They don't need to have, like they can be agnostic of each other. They can be scaled separately from each other again. and. That means like that makes like Kafka using Kafka makes it like with even with handling data, you can be very like a scale your, your application can be very scalable. Um okay, so does this answer the question, Tamaskin? Great. Uh thank you. So let's just uh we, we're not going to go into so much. Just we're going to have some demo just to like maybe see some stuff. Um, so we talked about producers and consumers is the ones that write and read the data from Kafka. Topics is um, how the data is actually um, organized inside Kafka. So in Kafka, the events, which are again, these are pieces of information or data, basically. Uh, event is like, um, yeah, so it, it, because it's a streaming, we are talking about event, which means like, um, Something that happened at the point of time. Uh, so um, yeah, so again, it can be like uh, the order in time or the order they are written in is like uh, is it's guaranteed to be kept basically. So it's not just data that's stored without order. There is some order that is guaranteed there. So topics, events are organized in, in topics. So um, so a topic and the events inside of it is like just like uh, a folder and the files inside inside of it in, in a file system. Um, in a, at a particular topic can have multiple producers writing to ins, uh, into it, and multiple consumers reading from it at the same time. Um, and okay, basically you can choose like when you start your like Kafka. Uh, when you just configure your Kafka topic, you decide like you choose how much time your data you want your data to be returned, retained. So it can be like for a particular time, 
um, short or long, up to is up to you, or can be like forever if you want. Um, so, okay, so this is um, another thing is partitions. So, partitions are like um, a topic itself is partitioned into like into different partitions, and um, like uh, and each basically each partition is on a different uh, Kafka broker 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 so these brokers are the servers that can be distributed basically so this is um a way of like uh, distributing your data so um in in a particular topic uh events that have the same key will, will be stored in the same partition and uh, Kafka guarantees that the event in a particular partition are always read in the same order as they were written in. So, um, okay. So just to see this in a little. So suppose this is a topic, and this topic has four partitions, and we have like a couple of producers um that are, are writing into this um this topic and basically um okay so like the color here is coding the key so uh, you can see that like um, um there are like uh, uh events so this uh, each square is an event an event that share keys are all in the same partition. So you don't have these purple ones, you don't have purple in other partitions, they are all in the same partition, P2, uh, and like the orange ones are also in the same partition and so on and so forth. It's fine that consume, uh, producers can write to the same partition at the same time. So like, let's see, like producer one and two are also are both writing to partition three, and they are at the same time also uh, writing to different partitions um, at the same time. And uh, yeah, so yeah, so this is basically how it just looks like. Um, okay, so more like uh, this is already explained uh, that uh, like uh, servers and that Kafka is run on the cluster of more on one one or more servers. Some of these servers are where the um, the the data store stored is called. These are called the brokers. And uh, some other servers will run Kafka Connect. Kafka Connect is um, how Kafka can get uh, information or data from like other traditional uh, or like uh, existing system. Like if you have a system that you have like already traditional database, maybe Postgres or somewhat like uh, you can use Data Connect to to get the uh, stream the data from there to to Kafka and um okay so and again clients we talked about so these are applications or microservices that read write and process the streams from ev and events um from Kafka or, or to Kafka and um so um like and these are like you don't really need you don't need to write your own okay so these are pieces of code that you, you use like but like there are like uh, are available either through kafka or they some of them come ready with kafka like the producers and consumers from from console like writing from console and just reading to the console and others are provided by Kafka community. There are more uh, from like, um, and then there is this uh, what is called Kafka streams. Let me stick here. Um, okay, so the Kafka stream. Oh. Hold. All right. These are APIs, and these are higher level from clients, and. Uh, yeah, so we are going to discuss Kafka Stream tomorrow. Uh, but for today, uh, let's just have some kind of uh, a basic. Okay, so it's a short demo. Uh, any questions before we go into that? Okay. 
uh, since like we are short on time, let's just like go. Uh, just one moment. Yes, hello. My question is how do we go with the approach of integrating Kafka and how do we make our application? So yeah, for for me to use Kafka the other time I had to use Docker because I think it uses Java and, and so on. So if I use it if I'm sorry locally, it probably give me problems. Like do you have to use Docker for the other to containerize the other application like Backtrader? Uh, and so, or what is the approach that is recommended? Uh, okay, so that's a, that's an important question. Yes, so um, installing also installing Kafka itself is not a big deal. So basically, you can install it um, directly, or like uh, you can use it inside Docker. Um, uh, so you can install Kafka itself with Docker, but how do you use it with your other um, other parts? Yes, yeah, so yeah, Kafka is true, is using Java or Scala. So these are provided, for example, the stream APIs, the Kafka stream APIs are um, are like to be used in Docker, in, sorry, in Scala or Java applications. So. Um, and like we mostly use Python uh, and not Java or Scala. So to to use, you have to basically use the streams or the clients that are written that um, for like more suitable for what is your use case. So there are so even though these are like the, the one provided by Kafka directly, but there are ones that are provided by the community and basically there you can find uh, other languages. So you can find Python and um, any other language you want basically is there. Uh, so in the demo, we're going just to see the console and file and um, just basically reading from a file and writing to a file or like you're seeing from the console, these are things that maybe like, um, Probably you're not going to be using console, but like from file is also something that may you might be using as well. Um, so just uh, in um, sorry, in service of time, or oh, sorry, because of time constraint, let's just start with this, and then we can like uh, tomorrow. If we don't have time in today, we'll just complete tomorrow this discussion, of course. Uh, okay, so. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay, just um, I will explain what I did here. So, all right, I have what I'm having. So I'm, I don't want to run it from the start. This is uh, I don't know. It looks awful. This, but what I have here basically is I'm running a Kafka container. So what I did is just I pulled an Apache Kafka image, and I ran it. And you can see here I have port um, 1992. Here, this is a TCP uh, connection. Uh, and um, yeah, so I'm just running this container. And yeah, it has been running so for a while. So that's why it has like all of this. Okay. Uh, this is just the log um, information from earlier. So what I have here, let me just get out so I can show you what I'm doing. So, or like, um, it doesn't it doesn't matter where I am here. This is just my local machine, but because I have this Docker container running Kafka, and I didn't name it, so uh, Docker gave it this stupid name. Uh, anyway, um, so what I'm doing here, I'm running inside of this Docker container. So I will run Docker X, X, 
it's cute, I think. It's uh, short for IT, and then the name of the container. And um, I want to run, the, I want to just get to the, the terminal inside the container. Okay, so I will run bin and bash. And that here I am inside. So this is actually the container ID. You can see it is the same here. So I'm inside now. Sorry. And to run everything in in this, everything is Kafka is like a, a script basically. So it's a, a .sh a file, and you can find it here. It is in the inside. This is inside the container. It's inside this opt. So you can see like and cd into opt kafka and basically like if you if you like um install kafka inside it like locally installing it locally just means that you are going to download some um zip file and just extract it and basically you'll have the scripts there so you can see like the content here for example i will have all of the commands in bin um see like here and you can see these are like uh, different scripts for doing uh, like different things. So, for example, there is um, Kafka topic. It's, um, sorry, what is called? So you have Kafka topics here, and you can you can see if we run it. So it's bin Kafka topics. It's edge. And it shows us like the different commands we can run. And basically, you can create, delete, describe, or change a topic. Okay. And uh, using this, so one, one command is create. So this is create to create a new topic. And um, yeah, that's uh, like uh, basically, can use this one to create a new topic. Let's say, let's see clear. So what I have is this bin and then I create. So I create a new topic. Let's just like here is a demo topic. And uh, I need to, to choose um, a broker to, to have my, my topic on. So it would call like bootstrap uh, server. And um, so I am installing it locally. I don't have other server, so it's this local host, and it's 1992. And do I need another? I don't think I need another um, thing. It will tell me if I, if I made a mistake. So. Okay, there you go. Ah, oh, sorry. I made a mistake in the command. So I need to so this I need to specify this is the name. So, so this topic here. It's created now. Uh, and actually I can see that I, it was created. So it can run basically describe. Let's see, like, yeah, this is my, this is my topic is all like, um, like it's like, uh, it's only have one partition count, uh, one partition, because I just use basically the default and I didn't specify all these options. So I got the default, which is like I have this one partition and this one replica of that whole topic. And basically once I have this topic, I can start writing the, the data into it or like consuming data from it. So to do that, I can use, um, so just like, okay, just to, so like, um, actually let's look at the, this is just basically information from different uh, parts of the document, official documentation, so nothing really, 
but I don't have this, uh, how to say, this like by, by heart, like the, um, okay, so, um, so basically we can start by like writing from console and to do that, let's actually look at it here. So it's um, again in the bin, I have, you can see if there is Kafka console producer here, right? So I can basically um, use it and to see how, so this is one is ready to use. I can just use this one. And um, so basically what I'm trying to do here is that like, um, I'm trying to um, create a producer is from console that I'm going to just enter data from the console into my topic. And so what I need to specify is the topic I want to write into and um, and, the, and the server as well. Okay, so yeah, so what I will do is that um, okay, I will run the same. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Uh, I do this one. So this one, and then I will specify my topic, which is called demo topic. And then I will specify my server. Uh, server and it's local host 92 and basically it is asking me to enter so i will just like enter any kind of uh, demo so i will have like um this is event uh, one and event um sorry this event two and event three. So the here the 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 console producer that is comes from um, package with Kafka will just write each line you write on the console as a different event. So that's why like uh, um, what I'm doing here. So once I'm done, that's what I'm naming each my each of my lines as event one and event two and event three. And uh, yeah, so once I'm done, like uh, I'm done doing this, just like uh, go out of this. Let's control C and um, I have these data already inside of my topic and I can read it using a consumer. I can use a consumer also. Of course, I can use a different kind of consumer. I don't need to use a console consumer as well. But basically, there is a console consumer. So here. Uh, so it's consumer. And uh, so if I run this as is, and as a consumer is just going to be what consuming like indefinitely from, from, from the topic. So, and it will start by, by default it will start from now. So because I'm not writing to my topic at the moment, if I run this, I will not get anything. So I will not see anything in my screen. I will just have like an empty thing, but there is an option to run it from beginning. So that means it will read for for like in from my topic from the first event that was stored, and uh, in that I'm supposed to get like everything that was entered. So I can get like event one, and two, and and three, and it stops here um, because if I take like if I produce this to this to same topic now from let's go to another terminal and put this so i'm still here i'm also inside the inside my container the same in the same uh, opt kafka directory and i'm going to use my producer to write more to the same topic so right and um so okay 
So it asks me, I can enter anything I want. So let's say like I'm going to enter event uh, four after like um, after consumer started. So and enter this and go to the other terminal. You can see like it's directly read here. Um, yeah, that's like uh, this is the, the simplest uh, use of of this. Like uh, console consumers are very simple. And um, okay, so like we're like at the end of the time, but like uh, let's see the the file consumers and also like uh, connectors basically. So we, what there is that we are going to be using um connectors uh to file so we're treating our file as some kind of um a traditional um well it's a source of data that is already stored in a file and using a connector basically means that we can just read all the data from it into a topic and then of course we can read from it and to do that there are like some kind of um Okay, so uh, okay, so it's not it's not really complicated. So what I do, what we have to do is just um, so um, okay. I don't know if I should go into this, or maybe we'll leave it for tomorrow. But um, okay, just to okay. Is that a question? Uh, no, I just was asking if the document will, will be shared. You mean the one I'm reading from? This one? Or yeah. the slide? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is just like, um, so this is just basically from, but okay, I can just as, at least share this part where like I'm doing this, but it's basically just from the official. Um, official documentation what i'm writing here is exactly the exact uh, code i'm using with docker because the official documentation is using like the direct installation so this is just a slightly different not not really different from the official documentation but if you really want i can just share it if you want if that's going to be helpful i can do that okay i can share it uh, if you don't uh, okay so just to show you um in like because i already did this but uh, in this like i should maybe like kill my container and start again just to see it from the start but let's not do that let me not do that and just i will um so there is a configuration so there is this config called the subfolder so going into like uh, You'll find that there are like, for example, this. So um, there are multiple configurations here and some of them are sample files for configurations and this will maybe we'll talk about tomorrow. And um, actually, actually we can talk about this just right now because this, there is this connect file sync, which is a connector to, um, for like a forum for file basically. So, but for here, like, uh, this is when you run a standalone uh, server here and you can just we can see the configuration here so it's connect why am i why am i letting it um so i'm just like um i use cut to see the the content and uh, okay so this is a file as it is it comes let it start from here so it's not super clear so start from here these are all like uh, comments so basically it's like explaining the source or what it is so here is the default for a bootstrap server with this one setting so this is like um default for the server and um yeah so there are multiple um configuration options here and what i what i care about here is that if you want to use a connector what is called a connector you have to add your connector uh to the um, a plugin path 
when the file comes without any. So this one I added because I wanted to use uh, connect to file. And, um, and this is just the path to that jar. So basically, um, it's, it's actually already available in the libs um, libraries um, subdirectory. So if I just look at that one, libs here, you can see there are many that is, they come from with Kafka. So this was just one of them. What was it called? Actually. Connect file. So this is the one. I can see that the connect this and there are like other types of connectors that for different kinds of uh, um, and there are of course this is that the one comes directly with, with Kafka but you can actually install some that are available through like um, Kafka community basically uh so just um, i added that path the absolute path to that in the plugin path in the configurations for the servers uh, basically where my topic is and um after that i i can just use um once i have done that i can just create a connector to read from file and want to read uh, sorry to write uh, to read from file and then to write to what I was saying. So write the data from the file into Kafka and another one to read from Kafka from the from that file source. And um, sorry, so the one of them is going to be reading lines from a file into Kafka topic, and the other one is going to be um, like. Uh, reading messages from the Kafka topic and producing a new file. So these are different, you don't have to have both, but you can basically um, create both if you want. These are two like, uh, like these are the kinds of connectors that you can use with a file. So you can use from a file to Kafka and then from Kafka to a file. And basically what you need to do is like, uh, if you have some, Let's say, let's create um, a file. So let's echo some lines. Let's say like, um, I don't have like, a, I don't have creative thing to write. So I will write line one. So let me just echo different lines here. So this is line one, and then I will write line two and line three. So just, uh, I'm just gonna write them into a test uh, of txt so you can see this so yeah so this test it's here and um can okay, let's see the content of this one let's see yes line one line two line three it's really like different lines so uh, once i have that um i can run this command which what's it but uh, sorry come on let me explain what i'm doing here so okay so we can see i have three so first of all i'm running the command from connect standalone so this is like my command um and then I'm using three configuration files. I have this connected standalone, uh, connected standalone properties, which is the one that where I specified the path to connection to files. If you like, um, if you are keeping up with this, I'm sorry if this is a bit confusing. Um, so this is the one where I specified the configuration for my standalone server. Um, and specified like uh, that I can um, uh, specify there that I'm, I want to use a, con a file connector. Uh, so I added that to my plugin pass um, in this in this particular file. These other two are configuration files as well. And just to like maybe you can look at them here. So 
this is a sample configuration file. Basically, you can take it. It comes directly with, with Kafka. You can take it and modify it in the way you want. And just looking at it, um, this is the name. That will be the name of the connector. You can change this one. Um, uh, so the connector class, so this is what like, uh, it makes it a connector to file. So don't change this one. And um, and here I'm specifying the file I'm reading from here. So if I if I wrote a different file, I will have to to change the name here. Okay. So this is the 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 source file. There we have the sync one. So hold. So sync. So look at it. So this is the one that will write from topic to a file. And uh, here I will have to, uh, uh, like this is the, the configuration file again, I have to specify an output file. So it's similar to that one. It's just like it has an output, comp uh, like um, an output file to write to. And um, okay, running this, I'm going to, yeah, so it runs, it's going to be reading continuously from like uh, doing this. So this is going to be continuous, so it's not going to stop unless I stop it. And uh, so basically, I can see, of course, like we can actually see um, that we have, for example, that we like this, we have this uh, testing file that is like supposed to be produced by this connector from the topic that was created. And you can see that actually, um, okay, so, so this is different from what we created, right? So uh, this is because I did this before and I haven't changed the names of my I haven't changed the names of like my my files and stuff, so it's not it's not. Um, but if I like if I did it correctly, so this is what I did. So imagine this is what I did before, so it was working, and um, it will take like if correcting this will not take so much time. But um, um, let's just stop here because we are over time, and let's see if there are questions so far. So basically, if I if I did um, if I didn't commit this mistake, the the testing file test file will have the same lines that they were in my text before because like uh, this what was uh, what was the connector supposed to do is reading the, the two connectors. One of them is reading from my text my text text file into a topic, and the other one is reading from the topic to another uh, file. Uh, so the new output file is supposed to be the same as the one that I, I, I input before. So yeah, sorry. So this is a mistake I committed. Um, in like because this uh, I'm running this a second time and I use the same names for the files. So anyway, um, I hope this was like um, in some way like uh, at least gave you an idea of what Kafka and how it works. Um, any questions? Okay, things are fine. Okay, so I will share about the, the slides and even the file, the txt file, the, sorry, the document file. So you ask for it, it doesn't have anything great, but it's just like, if you want, you can get it. Um, and yeah, so we'll meet tomorrow to continue this also about Kafka tomorrow. So um, yeah, have a thank you for being here and have a great um, evening.